Hey guys, this is Meredith. You're watching Rose Foray. Um, I am getting ready for a meet that I'm going to with the Colorado community. Um, we're going to round one, um, which is an arcade. It's one of my favorite places to go to, so I'm really excited. I've got half my coordinate on. Um, I've got the rest of it planned out. I'm like getting ready to go. I've already primed my face to do my makeup. Um, but I haven't done my hair yet because I wanted to show you guys how I style my curly hair for Lolita fashion. Um, there's not a whole lot of tutorials out there for curly hair for Lolita fashion and I sort of have just had to figure out my curly hair journey on my own for the most part in general. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing with my hair for a really long time. I used to straighten it like on a regular basis um, just because there wasn't a whole lot of information out there about like gel and cream and like styling techniques and things like that and I really have embraced my curls since then and have learned a thing or two <laughs> and I'd like to kind of share what I've learned um, hopefully it's helpful um, curly hair styling is really not a one-size-fits-all thing because curly hair is a pretty large spectrum from um, like you could have a wavy textured hair to up to very 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 coily hair like a lot more so than mine even um, and there are different ingredients and different products that work in different textures so what it works in my hair may not work in your hair but um, some of the techniques I use are pretty universal for all types of hair, um, all types of textured hair. So hopefully <laughs> some of it is relevant to you and you can take away some useful info. Um, I will be sharing all the products I use um, as I go along in the process. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. This is what I look like when I wake up in the morning. I do what's called pineappling to my hair, um, which is basically just tying it in a super, super high um, ponytail so that when I sleep at night my curls aren't bothered by like my head tossing and turning and the friction of it like being against the pillow at night so I literally just like <laughs> do that when I sleep I wake up and I take it out and the results are pretty interesting <laughs> I feel like a dog I have so much hair I <laughs> My bangs look so uneven. They're really not uneven. They're just <laughs> appearing that way right now. What I was going to say is it's really important to um, get regular cuts when you have curly hair, especially if you're trying to have long, long hair like I am wanting. It's really important to get your hair cut. Um, which sounds counterintuitive, but if you don't take care of your dead ends, like your hair won't grow the way you want it to. Um, I'm not the best example right now. It's been a little while for me, but I, I try to go twice a year. Um, make sure you're going to somebody who knows what they're doing with curly hair. Um, usually people who are styled or People who are certified in Diva, I think it's called Diva Chan Styling, um, the same people who make Diva Curl products. And I know Diva Curl is kind of iffy because there were recent controversies with like some other products causing hair to fall out and things. I personally never experienced that with Diva Curl, but I totally believe the people who did and you know, so on and so forth, so I'm not really vouching for diva curl necessarily but usually the people who get licensed through them to style curly hair know what they're doing you can look up reviews online you can look up pictures of um, clients after they've done their hair to see if you can find anyone whose hair looks kind of similar to yours um, just shop around don't settle for somebody just because they're nearby or affordable or whatever as you can see, I play with my hair a lot. I'm not nice to my hair. You really shouldn't be touching your hair as much as I do. But so I'm gonna go ahead and style my hair. I've already washed it. Um, 
I was going to wash it on camera, but then I was like, it didn't really line up with my wash days. Um, so I've already washed my hair. I will go ahead and show you the products I use though. Um, so first I use this Shea Moisture and it is the Manuka Honey and Yogurt Hydrate and Repair Shampoo. And when I use shampoo, I only apply it to my roots. I do a really little, little, little bit. Um, and then I just massage my roots with it like that. And when I rinse it out, the residual like soap from the shampoo will kind of cleanse the rest of my hair enough so that it's clean, but it's not being stripped of its natural like oils that are keeping it moisturized. The thing about Shea Moisture is that their products have no sulfates or parabens. You have to make sure that you read um, your bottles before you buy sh things like shampoo because sulfates are not good for textured hair. They are really bad for textured hair um, because your hair doesn't have as much of a natural oil to keep it moisturized and sulfates, while they are like cleansing, they are also kind of harsh and they can strip your hair of all the natural oils that are keeping it moisturized. Um, it's good to keep a little bit of that moisture in your hair. And so things with sulfates are usually too harsh for um, textured hair. You want to avoid those. This shampoo is like $11 a bottle, which I know is on the higher side, but there are more affordable brands at like drugstores and Target and things like that that um, don't contain sulfates. You just have to look on the bottle. And then I use this conditioner by Shea Moisture. It's the same line, Manuka Honey and Yogurt Hydrate and Repair Conditioner. And I use this conditioner very liberally. Um, I will squirt like like so much of it in my hand and then um, it's good to start I'm like pretending I'm washing my hair it's good to start on the roots because the roots tend to lose moisture the quickest just because of the friction of your hair moving around and stuff make sure the majority of your conditioner is at the bottom and then you work your way up um, that way too, the conditioner isn't like bothering your scalp if you tend to have like a sensitive scalp or have dandruff and stuff, I don't know. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I tend to um, get itchy scalps and stuff and usually it's because I'm using too much of my conditioner up here. Um, I can't co-wash my hair the way some people can. Co-washing is when you use strictly conditioner um, to cleanse your hair, you don't use the shampoo at all. Some people with curly hair have good results with that, but I can't do it. Um, it, it irritates my scalp too much. Um, this is when I detangle my hair, is in the shower. Um, do not brush your hair if you have curly hair. Like, I'll show you my husband's brush. Like, don't, don't do that. This is cursed. It's not cursed, but don't do that. <laughs> if you're going to, I mean, you should detangle your hair. When you're going to detangle your hair, you should use a wide tooth comb or you should use a wet brush. Those two things are really easy to find for a good price. I mean, wet brushes tend to be a little more expensive and you don't really need them. If you've got a wide tooth comb, those are pretty cheap. I don't rinse out my conditioner until I've detangled it and I've let it sit for um, about 10 minutes. The ingredients in the conditioner need time to work and um, moisturize and all of that. So I will leave my conditioner in my hair while I um, do the rest of my shower stuff and sometimes I will put it in a cap if I really want to protect it. It's important to not use a super high temperature water when you rinse your hair out. Um, and I'm guilty of doing this because I like hot showers, but like really hot water on your hair will lead to more frizz and um, it won't give you the best results. Um, so you want to turn the temperature down a little bit when you're rinsing out your hair. Um, after that, I will 
find my styling products and that's where I'm going to start showing you what I do. I'm going to wet my hair and then I will go ahead and apply my cream in my gel. Um, I'll show you how I can um, detangle my hair. Um, this is useful for the days in between washes um, because when you have curly hair, you really shouldn't be washing it every single day. Too much like water and shampoo and stuff like that can lead to not only build up in your hair of product, but also it can strip it of, again, its natural oils that are keeping it moisturized. I wash my hair every other day, which is still kind of overkill for my type of hair. Honestly, I could get away with um, every one, two, three days or something like that. But I am just doing it when I shower, so that's all the energy I have to spend on that. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the styling. Um, so I decided to get my hair wet off camera because the angle was kind of awkward to um, point it to a, towards the sink. So I, I didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So I basically just flipped my hair upside down, um, dipped my head in the sink, turned on the water, got it a little wet. Um, I used a little spray bottle of water to touch up the parts that don't I'm sorry if that's loud. <laughs> I use a spray bottle of water to touch up the parts that don't get super wet um, in the sink, so basically like kind of the roots and stuff, so I'll do a little spritzing of the top. This bottle sucks. Okay, but anyway, it's like 50% wet as opposed to how wet it might get if I were to just get out of the shower um, and that's all I need to do at the moment and getting it wet basically just it reactivates the product that was already in my hair so I don't need to add as much um, again now as I would have just getting out of the shower so that's another thing to keep in mind too right now I'm using a Denman brush sorry for the hair that's already on it <laughs> It happens. Um, this is called a Denman brush. I got mine on um, Amazon, but I would recommend you don't get it on Amazon because Jeff Bezos. There's plenty of places you can find one, I'm sure, um, besides that. But that's where I got mine. It wasn't that expensive, and it's specifically... I'm brushing kind of harsh. I could be a little uh, more delicate. But <laughs> it is specifically for curly hair and it helps detangle the hair while still keeping your curls defined. So now my hair is adequately wet for product. And the product that I'm going to use, I'm going to use a leave-in conditioner. And then I'm going to... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I just need to be able to see my bangs are like long. And then I'm going to use a gel. Um, and I'm going to use them in that order. It's good to um, keep in mind that cream should come before gel. Cream is supposed to kind of absorb in your hair, um, whereas gel is supposed to kind of maintain the style of your hair. One thing too to keep in mind while you're doing this, like obviously your hair's like wet, your shirt's gonna get wet. So <laughs> if you are wearing Lolita and you're wearing like a really fancy JSK or blouse or something, I wouldn't recommend styling your hair like this while you're wearing that. Um, put on something that you don't have to pull over your head to take off so that the friction is not like ruining the hair that you just worked hard to style um, like a robe or some other type of like button-up shirt or hoodie I'm gonna go ahead and add my cream product now this one is Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Curl Enhancing Smoothie 
I have been using this product for a really long time. I've always liked it. It's pretty thick as you can see, so I don't need to use a whole lot of it. Um, I will do like a very delicate like downward motion of massaging the product. I'm like barely touching my hair. Um, sometimes the oils in your skin can negatively affect like your curl pattern and stuff, so you want to use a light touch when you style your hair. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. I'm gonna add a little bit more and kind of turn it over, work on my other side here. I'm sorry if some of these angles are off, but <laughs> I'm not used to styling my hair for an audience. Hello? Um, can't forget my bangs. So I'm just making sure it's all over. I'm not really going to massage it into my scalp because like I said I have kind of a sensitive scalp and I don't want a bunch of junk in there. Oh, this is what happens when you have bangs. <laughs> Especially long ones. <laughs> Feeling nice and moisturized. So now I'm going to put my gel in. So the gel I'm going to use is called the brand is As I Am, and it's just called Classic Curling Jelly. It's kind of like a... <laughs> it looks rough, but this, this type of consistency I feel like is easier to work with, and it's nice on my hair type, this kind of jelly consistency. There are other, like, much thicker types of hair gel you can get um, formulated for curly hair. I know there are a few issues with Diva Curl products, but I do stand by some of their gel. Um, their Archangel is really nice, in my opinion. It's a little on the thicker side. Um, I have another gel by Shea Moisture, actually. Um, and I use a lot of that brand as well. And it's, um, I can't remember the name, but I will find it. And it's a really thick gel to the point where it's basically like a piece of like thick gelatin in a jar and you have to like dig it out with your fingers and like rub it in your hands before it's um, liquidized enough to like put in your hair and it's really um, effective honestly but kind of messy and not really user friendly so I don't always use that product. I really like the As I Am jelly. You can see um, right now I'm just detangling with my fingertips as I'm styling my hair. And another thing you can do to make your curls a little more defined, as you can see when I'm smoothing the gel in my hair here, um, <laughs> a lot of the curl gets lost because it, it's weighing my hair down a little bit, right? So one thing you can do, and you can use your hand, you can use a microfiber towel. If you feel like there's too much product or too much water in your hair, you can use like a towel in your hand and do a scrunching motion, just like one or two, um, too much. And then again, you'll lose the moisture, but I like to do it in my bangs because my bangs tend to take forever to dry and I can't see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll do that. Around now, I will use a little more of my gel to touch up the parts that tend to get frizzy the most, and this depends on your individual head of hair, so I can't tell you where to do this, but I tend to, like, back here and back behind my ear tends to get the frizziest, so I'm just gonna spot treat those areas with more gel. Alright, so I'm going to look in the mirror again real quick to make sure that I'm totally satisfied with the way my hair is styled. Um, and then from there I'm just going to let it air dry. So I'm happy with the way my hair is styled. I've got enough product in my hair to um, get the results I want, so I'm going to just let it hang. So now I want to talk about how I 
like to style my hair for Lolita fashion. Um, I really like curly hair in Lolita. I think it's so cute. Um, the volume of it really just goes perfectly with the volume of like the big dresses and the petticoats and things like that. So I actually love how curly hair looks in Lolita. One accessory I think that looks really cool with curly hair is rectangle headdresses, you know, tried and true. <laughs> rectangle headdresses, the size of them, I just think the fact that they're so big and curly hair is so big and voluminous um, just lends itself really well. Two rectangle headdress if you've got um, curly bangs and like curly like tresses here. Um, it can be really nice for framing your face um, and just looking looking super cute. I like to wear super big head bows in Lolita. Um, if you hadn't guessed by now, I wear sweet Lolita. <laughs> and I really like to use big bows to add on my smaller accessories. This is one of my favorite types of accessories are these little hair clips, um, which have these little alligator attachments and these little metal thingies they can be really rough on your hair so if you're like trying to style your hair and you think maybe it'll look good here so you clip it on oh no you try to clip it off a little bit of your hair comes off you know like you keep trying to like fix it you're damaging your hair the entire time you're doing that and you're just going to lead to frustration and having super frizzy hair where you wanted it to be nice and moisturized. Um, not that I would know from experience or anything. Like, I'm telling you, this will be not great for your hair. So, I like to use these big hair accessories to incorporate my smaller ones. I clip everything to the hair bow instead of my actual head so that I don't irritate my hair. I personally really like having twin bows in my hair as well. Um, sometimes I will just keep it super casual and just have clips in my hair. Um, these bigger ones are a little easier for me to manage, um, having them on my actual hair, especially if I have twin tails or um, some other type of updo. When I am putting my hair up for Lolita, I make sure to use these types of hair ties. Um, I think one of the name brands is Invisibobble, but basically any sort of these like springy um, rubber ones. Um, these are going to be best for your hair um, in preserving your curl pattern um, and not tearing at the hair too much. I haven't really decided what I want to do with my hair today. I think I may either keep it down or do a bun. I haven't really decided, but I'm going to, regardless, wait till it dries a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and do my makeup um, and I will check back later to show off the final style, I guess. Now I feel pressure, <laughs> but yeah, I will check back later and we will we will see how things look <laughs> thank you for watching i really appreciate it um make sure to subscribe to rose foray we come out with new videos every week um and yeah we'll see you guys later bye bye